Hi folks, hope you're all well out there still. Today's video is about VocoScreen NG, the NG standing for new generation, although I should say there seems to be a new new generation at the moment. I wasn't actually going to do this video, but I've just switched recently to VocoScreen as in yesterday, and I got some feedback from people about the posts I made, and it sounded like people are quite impressed with it. So I went and had a look just also at a couple of videos just to see, you know, what sort of tutorials and so on were offered. And what amazed me was that most of the videos are either one year ago or so or eight years ago. And the pity was they weren't really showing some of the newer features that Focus Screen has got. You know, for example, such as this mouse halo effect that you can see around the mouse cursor and the magnifier and, and one or two other features. So I thought, you know what, maybe I should just do a video anyway then. It's not gonna be very long, but I'll just go through a couple of the things that it does do and mention a couple of things that, you know, that I had to sort out as well. In essence, it's a very simple screencast creator. If you want something really detailed with multiple inputs and outputs and various other effects, you know, OBS Studio is still probably one of the best options, the most powerful for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. But, you know, for many people, this is going to suffice. I was using Simple Screen Recorder before, but then I realized it doesn't have the mouse halo effect and the magnifier and one or two other things. So hence, you know, why I've actually switched now. So this is the website for Voco Screen. You'll see they're 10 years old already. And it's got a fair bit of information here. Obviously, the most important people are going to worry about is how to download. And I should just say that a lot of the repos for Linux are not showing the latest version. I think they are still on 3.08 or somewhere around there. That update, the other update happened in December or so, I think, to 3.1. The one I'm actually running at the moment is 3.2.0 beta for Linux, but it does work for Linux and for Windows, so either or should work. They've got the installation instructions here as well, how to install it. I did a manual install for the beta release because, as I said, it's not in my repos yet. It installed flawlessly, no problems, and, and of course the the changes that you can see here as well. So the, the current Linux repos, as I said, are not showing these changes, 3.1 from December yet. I'd imagine they're gonna update very soon, and obviously 3.2, which is the beta release. It is an open source project, so you can go to the project page on GitHub, and you'll see here was important eight days ago, last month, 21 days ago, showing updates on the project and the issues are actually relatively clean i must say there's a couple of open issues but a lot of issues have been closed as well so it looks like a fairly active project which is always very good so let's just have a look then i think at the actual voco screen if you start it up this is what you're going to see this tab over here brings up these tab views along the top here and this is essentially all your recording controls so i'm recording at the moment on full screen you can choose also a window and then click on that particular window and it'll record just the window. You can also click an area like this and you'll see it is highlighting the area now. You can move it around, you can adjust the size of the area. I also use, by the way, because under full screen, it's not showing you which monitor is which monitor. I actually use the area view. I switch it over there and depending on where this window is showing, I know then also that DP4 is this monitor. It's just a tip, you know, for people there. The magnification is quite a nice feature. So if you click that on, you'll be able to move over text like that. And you can show people, especially this is quite important if you, you know, got mobile viewers and people on smaller screens and that sort of thing. And you can also adjust the size. So you can take a smaller square magnification. I've shown the two already. And the three, oops, the three is going to be a, a much bigger, wider sort of a view, really. I find two is probably sufficient. The countdown timer is just a countdown before recording starts. You can disable that or put it on zero if you want to. 
then on the sound settings you can choose one or more of these sound settings but just to remember oh I've got to just turn off that turn off that magnification there although you can switch on more than one sound source the application doesn't have a mixer so if you want to mix and adjust at audio levels you're just going to, have to maybe use a third or a second application in the background just to adjust your sound levels correctly but I have tried it it successfully works with two so this is working off my main microphone you could also record off the webcams microphone or in this case this would be my audio output the computer speakers output if you wanted to say record sounds for a game or something like that you've got two, two uh, audio codecs you can choose from and then on the video settings uh, obviously the frame rate at the top these are the formats that are supported on, on Linux anyway at the moment most people are recording on mp4 just remember mp4 very very compatible but if your recording crashes for whatever reason or the app crashes, you've lost the recording. Things like MK4 is an open source format and that'll help you recover that video without losing what you've recorded up to that point. So just, you know, two things to consider there really. I don't really mess much with the rest over here. These are just the, the various settings for the encoding and the quality setting over there. You can also turn off recording of the mouse cursor down at the bottom. Here you're just setting the path where you're going to be saving the video or the recordings to by default. You can limit the amount of free space so that it doesn't uh, fill up your whole drive. Whether you want it in the sys tray, minimized or not when it starts, and then minimizing it when you start recording, and then wait how long before recording. Again, you can, you can disable that. They do have little helps over here. So that'll pop up to, to give you some assistance. On the timer side over here, you can either have a timer start for when it's got to start recording at a particular hour and, and minute, or you can also have a setting here for when it must stop recording, after how long, or elapsed time, if you want to record only 30, 30 minutes or something. This just gives you an indication of what codecs for video and audio are supported by whichever format, and also depends on what you've got installed as to what is supported on your system. There's the developer and a couple of other links to the source code, the home page and that sort of thing. That's the main recording view. Then down on the left hand side here, there's some other things you can activate or not. So the one is obviously the webcam camera, which you can turn on and off over there. You can also select which camera you know you want to use and what resolution you want the camera to work in. So for example, where am I? I'm over there. And you'll see also this one comes up with a little frame around the image. Well, you can move that image, but you can also down over here, turn off the frame. So that'll give you a sort of a frameless look. Just bear in mind now you can't really move that. So you've got to have the frame on if you want to, if you want to move it over there. You can also right click on it and get a couple of quick, quick actions as well. It's got a couple of other options like invert, gray, I don't know why the black and white is giving the strange oh it's actually not working too badly now but anyway a lot will depend on your on your video driver and you can do flipping horizontally and otherwise as well so that's really camera and it only does one camera at a time so again OBS studio if you want to mix you know multiple sources this is one of the newer settings especially on the Linux side you've got two options here one is to set this halo that you see around the cursor and the other one is the click so if i click for example there you'll see that's the click action and i've got them set up so obviously you can change the color to you know whatever color you you really want and you've got three other settings over here that is to set the size of the of the halo this one was the transparency Bear in mind, if the transparency is not working on Linux, it will be, for example, probably because your, in my case, compositor I use under KDE for the fade effects and the fancier effects and so on. If you don't have something like that active, then what you're going to see here is a, sort of just a, a sharp contrast on off type thing. And so, you know, look at your video drivers. If you've got a problem there with the fading, you're not seeing the fading working here. 
and then this is the size of the how can I put it the hole in the donut of the halo you see you can have a very light circle on the outside unfortunately what I am noticing it doesn't close it completely I wouldn't have minded having that closed obviously if you're gonna have something like that you are gonna have to have a bigger hole otherwise people won't be able to see what the text is on the inside there so there is that really uh, how did I have this I had it sort of there the click effect the same thing you can change the color and you've got various other things here again things like the size of the ring I forget oh that's also the the transparency I think how transparent it is and that's how long it's going to remain when you click how long that thing stays on before it fades you can turn them both on and off over here if you want to and what's of interest also is these shortcut keys. You can define the shortcut keys. This generally is apparently control over here. I'm just using shift and the function keys, but you could have shift alt or the meta key or whatever you want to use. So for example, if I wanted to turn this halo on and off, you'll see it's F6. So if I go shift F6 now, it's off and it's on. If I wanted to turn the camera on, I could just do shift and F8 over there and the camera will come back on again um, again you can just do shift F8 and it's off again they have made a note here just remember that if, if one of these shortcuts is not working it's likely that the shortcuts already been grabbed by another application and that's possibly the reason then the other thing it's got which is quite nice is integrated video player so you can click over there to quickly go and open a video and you can just say open and it'll start playing there so that's also quite handy in that you again you don't have to keep opening external applications you can adjust volume here and so on the last one over here this light bulb is actually sort of a status debug log thing that just gives you lots of additional information for troubleshooting and so on and really the last thing to show probably is just the starting of the recording so you can see here is a confirmation of what my current settings are at the moment and if I was to use the shortcut key, in my case shift F10, you'll see there it starts the countdown. The timer hasn't started recording here yet. It's the one second delay and now it's actually recording the, it started a recorded session. And I can just use one of my shortcuts to pause if I want to say shift F12. And I can use shift F10 again just to end the recording. And that really is about it. The only other thing I can just mention as a tip for specifically multi-screen users, it draws the screen from the top left, in other words, zero, zero pixels off to the right and downwards across your three or four screens. So I had a problem when I switched the magnifier on, I was actually not seeing the text I was standing over to show me from the screen on my left hand side. And it turns out the reason is that I had my screen set up in a bit of an odd order. I've got screen one in the middle, screen two on the left, and screen three on the right. I can't remember why, but apparently that refresh or draw upsets the application, or specifically this application in any case. I haven't noticed it before. But once I'd reordered my screens from the left, one, two, three, in order again, there we go. The magnification worked again perfectly on the right on the right screen so yeah that's really actually voco screen i think in in brief i hope and hope it helps some people if you especially on linux are, are looking for a type of screen recorder that has also got magnification a mouse halo type effect and showing the clicks and that sort of thing then voco screen should be certainly one of your considerations if you're looking for a quick and simple type screen recorder again like i said if you're complex you know obs studio is going to be your friend so that's really it hope you enjoyed that and uh, i'll see you in my next video